Yeah, this is Al McRobbie at Salig Company, and today we're going to look at the contents of the uh, Siglant SDS 1202X. I think it's a 1202X. That's what it is. Okay, here we go. There we have it. Now it's ergonomic. Okay, so now we've got the scope unboxed and unwrapped and the thing's been running for a while, so. Um, well, here's my general impression on the scope, is that it's a, it's a good general purpose instrument. And what they've done is they've pushed down a lot of the features of a 2000 series scope down into the 1000 price range. And what this means for the, the user is a, is a nice big screen. You can see that the display quality is good and that the you know, fonts and characters and things are really rather pleasant looking. Um, that's pretty much what you'd get on a Siglin 2000 series scope. Um, and you also have a number of, of embedded features that are, you know, in, uh, enhanced features of the trigger setup or measurement features here. Um, you've got some bells and whistles in the display and acquisition menus as well. Um, I'll just take some time to point out a couple of things. Um, one of the things is, is that it's got a, um, a record length of 14 mega points and I think a really useful feature is a 60,000 waveform uh, per second refresh rate. So those uh, those uh, little glitches that occur only occasionally have a much better chance of being found by this scope than one that's going a lot slower. Um, just a word on the uh, use or the ease of use on the thing is that I found that it. Uh, for me, it was really easy to use without even having to read the manual, but we always advise people to read the manual, so um, take that with a grain of salt. One of the things I like to do right at the beginning on a scope, if it's got serial decoders, I like to try to see how easy it is to set those up. And I think this scope is as easy as any of the other ones that I've used, you know, to get some de uh, decoding going. I found that it was accurate and um, didn't have any trouble grabbing the, the uh, frames that I was trying to see and I knew what I was sending and that then the scope displayed them all correctly so I was satisfied with that. Um, it's, uh, as you can see, there's a, a large number of buttons all over the screen here and uh, plus, you know, down here and so forth. And uh, so that means that uh, some of the features, you know, you can go directly to like, like cursors or, you know, when you press cursors, you're going to get uh, you know, the instant menu stuff coming up right there, just like that. Um, and these, these uh, buttons that have a little blue arrow next to them are toggles. You can just turn things on and off that way. Um, so you've got, you know, features like auto setup, that, uh, uh, factory defaults, which is nice, the cursor, the measurements I just mentioned. Um, there's a clear sweep button too, which is nice. Um, the, under the measurements key here, I've got one going down here that's just measuring the frequency of the sine wave. Uh, there's 36 automatic measurements on this unit, and they, they come up in a, a nice uh, array of uh, check boxes um, that you can, you can use for this. If you pick up a type like this, you see them all. So I've just got frequency going right now, so that's, that's all that you see down here. Um, one of the things I, sh I should mention uh, about the scope is that, you know, while it's got a lot of functions and things that, a lot of bells and whistles that make it nice to use and are, are useful features, um, you know, in this particular scope series for this price range, you know, one of the things that they, um, they had to give in on a little bit was the, the sample rate, which I, I know that others have mentioned. This is a 200 megahertz scope with a one gig of sample rate. And you can look at 200 megahertz with this thing uh, if you use one channel. It'll do pretty, a pretty good job with that. If you try to use both channels at 200 megahertz, it's, it's going to um, have a little bit of trouble with the sampling rate, as you can imagine. Um, one of the things that, that is nice is that it does display the sample rate right here 
and how many points are actually um, in the are on the screen at that moment. Um, it gets a little interesting when you are running two channels, you know, with the scope going as fast as it can, with you know, and you're right out there at 200 megahertz because you'll you'll find the number of points on the screen goes down pretty low and, and you end up getting a resulting waveform that you would expect with such a low number of points. So the thing to do is to remember if you just if you need to use the full bandwidth of the scope to just use one channel on it. So um, you know other than that it's a it's a good solid unit. Um, it's got a, a ton of features on it that are that are nice. Um, one of the one of the things I always try to do is uh, uh, aside from serial decoding, it's just put in an ultrasound type of burst, um, which we have right here, and it uh, you know it does that very nicely and triggers on it. Um, the uh, one of the one of the things that you can do, you know, you can you can take a look at uh, you know run this thing down because it's a, it's a it's a it, the rep rate on this little three cycle burst is uh, 100 milliseconds. And it's not not exactly easy to see, so you can change your acquisition menu. We're in we're in peak detect right here, so that's correct. And then I can go down to the display menu, and I can I can turn on color, and the, the color display is a it's a color temperature display of how often a particular part of the waveform uh, is happening in time. So cooler temperatures and things are happening less often. And you can see that it uh, helps to display those uh, tiny little narrow pulses that are there. If we, again, if we want to expand that out, we can see the color temperature changes again. And uh, there's, our, there's our burst waveform of uh, one megahertz happening every 100 milliseconds. So that's about it. So it's, it's, a, it's a nice unit. Um, you know, it, it's, uh, it's not everything for everybody, but it's, you know, within its limitations, I think it's a good solid instrument. So, you know, any questions, give me a telephone call.